Right, we are live. Hello and uh, welcome to CMB's uh, monthly meetup. Uh, today we're joined by Halima Salat and Mimzi Vid. Uh, as you've seen the topic, we'll be talking about Zara K's uh, arrest and then the campaign Justice for Zara K uh, today. Um, so as we know, Zara K was, uh, is an ex-Muslim, a women's rights activist who was arrested in Tanzania and last month. Uh, and then ex-Muslims from around the world came together and started a campaign in her defense uh, with the hashtag justice for Zara K and stand up for Zara K. And today we're joined by two of, uh, uh, of with uh, Alima Salat and Mimzi Vid, who are actually part of the campaign and leading the campaign. Um, we'll be setting uh, a lot of the things straight because there's been so much in the on the social media about this. Uh, so. Uh, as we know, apostasy in Islam is usually compared to treason uh, and uh, ex-Muslim, vocal ex-Muslim uh, face a backlash from their former communities. And that backlash seems to be a bit severe when it comes to ex-Muslim women. And that I feel like is a good place to start. Uh, if uh, we have two ex-Muslim, vocal ex-Muslim women from two different parts of the world, from two different Muslim communities, uh, if we start with highlighting the kind of behavior that that's portrayed towards ex-Muslim women, local ex-Muslim women. Uh, if you just highlight it a bit and then... Yeah, I mean, basically, I just, I think what's important to understand with ex-Muslim women and leaving is the experience of initially Muslim women. So how Muslim women are viewed um, within the communities is very much, and obviously this is kind of generally, um, that you know they are subservient obedient they have to follow the rules um and obviously this idea of them having to cover their themselves because of their sexuality they can't kind of portray any sexuality and uh, they have to hide from men and whatever um all that stuff that we know at muslim women so if you kind of flip that um and take that away so an ex-muslim woman to the community is therefore the opposite of all of that um so it's this you know whore she wants to sleep around she's not obedient now she's wild and she's just um you know kind of wanting to do whatever and uh, crazy and it, it it's just a um an exaggeration of of the opposite of what they expect of women basically um and so being an ex-muslim it is for them for the community i mean it, it's an ultimate sort of betrayal almost in their mind that betrayal of what they think women should be um because you're so vocal you have a mind of your own you're speaking out and you're showing your body you're actually doing whatever you want you know just your arms out or whatever it is you decide to do for them it's just too much um so there is a massive backlash when it comes to ex-women more so than men because of this difference um you know men do have a bit more freedom, even as a even as a Muslim. Not to say that they don't have a disgustingly horrible, you know, death threats and all kinds of things happen to them. But there is a difference in how women are viewed that makes the ex-Muslim women experience, I think, slightly differently. Um, so, for someone like, actually, I think my my experience and my husband's experience is a really good example of that, because we are essentially from the West, right? Um, and our community is from here. Um, and, you know, from very, we, we both were brought up in a very Muslim orientated environment. He's been on YouTube for a very long time, Vidu Vids, if anyone doesn't know. Um, and he's been technically out on YouTube for a while. Um, and, you know, his community was sort of like, oh, it's not great really, but what are you gonna do? Um, <laughs> When I came out, it was a whole, it was like an explosion. <laughs> um, you know, it was like, who does she think she is? She's embarrassing us. And it, it's this like real uproar when it comes to a woman doing this. Um, and yeah, I, I don't want to go on and on. Halima, do you want to, do you want to jump in? Okay. Yeah, also there's yeah. a notion of uh, honor that's connected to women because there's a yeah. saying in, in Pakistan, in Urdu and Punjabi, that if a man goes astray, it's only one person that goes astray. But if a woman goes astray, that means the generations to come are gone with her. So there is a lot more pressure in women. That comes with a lot more policing of women. And then women, when women leave 
and choose to talk about it, of course it hurts them. It hurts them to see because these are the values they hold quite dear, whatever those values are. Uh, and uh, Halima, are you yeah, are- Yeah, it's, 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 I mean, that's why I wanted to bring in the, the, the aspect of honor as well, because it's, it, it, it's like an ownership of, of the female body. And yeah. the, the woman, the, the female uh, child, uh, belongs to the family to the community um in terms of like um the honor of the entire community rests on our women and 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 that's when then you also see this tribalistic aspect of targeting that happens to ex-muslim women for example i'll just give an example the the biggest hate i get online is from uh, people from Soma my ethnicity somali muslim men yeah. Um, Zara right now is experiencing a lot of uh, trouble, and that, that's what we're going to get into into details. Um, the amount the hate she receives is mostly directed from her own community, and yeah. and it it almost seems like the entire commu a commu uh, the community looks like that's our girl, our woman, and she's now shaming us yeah. in public, and this this image belongs to us and she's tarnishing it, basically. Uh, Definitely, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, because uh, Halima, you are from Somalia and Kenya, that's Eastern Africa, and that's where Tanzania is as well. So you have a lot better idea than we do. If you'd like to talk about some of those communities and their behavior towards apostasy and how it manifests in that part of the world. Yeah, uh, as much as we know that the 13 countries that are most, uh, mostly in the Middle East that where apostasy and blasphemy are punishable by law in the laws, um, you also have to understand that Muslim communities in, in, in Africa, in, in, in all over the world, um, it, it, it becomes like you have to compound a few things together. Like here in the West, of course, we still face uh, a lot of um, pushback and, and harassment and, and, and threats and that kind of stuff. But the system is there to protect us. You know, I mean, there's an efficient policing system. But now I need you to compound um, that kind of backlash and, and that kind of targeting with an inefficient, corrupt um, um, systems. Yeah. Because um, I'm from Kenya, I couldn't get any type of protection from from uh, police because I committed to targeting me. Um, you also have to understand that in, in, in countries like Kenya, Tanzania, East Africa, um, or Africa in general, uh, God is really big. Even if the country is, is what, 70% Christianity, um, an atheist. Um, faces so you have to keep compounding it to yes. an atheist facing that kind of backlash systems okay. that are broken a community targeting you and then you get the clearer picture yes yes completely thank you for that and uh, besides being part of this campaign you guys are also good friends with Zara K uh, if I can ask you if you're aware of any of uh, uh, the threats or any of the behavior that was concerning that Zara had been facing from her former community uh, just to tie in with that whole point yeah i mean um yeah we we are both uh, really good friends zara and it's been a constant thing um she's been getting um death threats rape threats um you know constant it's not even sort of been a break really it's been ever since she's been sort of outwardly uh, ex-muslim and vocal and talking about issues um she gets them on all of her social medias um you know all you know facebook instagram everywhere um where different people from that community are kind of threatening her and telling her that she needs to keep quiet um and she's an embarrassment and you know what they want to do with her um as i said i think as we mentioned earlier, disgustingly, it it does become this kind of sexual thing with women, particularly. Um, yeah. And you know, it, it, there there are kind of really detailed, disgusting messages that are. I don't know if you have any Ali to show right now, but she I, has posted many. Uh, yeah, there there are a lot. So let me just screen share. Oh. Yeah, and in fact, um, if if. Um, I would even go as far as say that uh, among all the ex-Muslim women I know, Zara gets the, the, the 
huge, the biggest um, um, amount of vitriol online mm. um, in in private messages as well. In, 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 in Sorry to cut you off, Alima. If, I'm not sure if my screen is being shared right now. Uh, ah. I'm terrible at this stuff. Can you guys uh, in the comments tell us if the screens? Are, I'm just trying to show some of the messages uh, that Zara has been getting from her former community throughout the years. Let me have a quick look. No, well, I think the I can't, I can't see. Okay. Let me do my entire screen. Okay, I think I I figured it out. I'm just awesome. really sad with that. Awesome. Okay. There. You see, guys, there's she needs to be exposed. I don't know what this word means. Is uh, it the Swahili one? Yes. But um, uh, and a president. I is, still can't is, see it. I but... can't see it either. Okay. I, I, I think we should move forward then because I've okay. never. Okay. Okay. Anyway, it's fine. I mean, basically, if you follow Zara, you probably would have seen this because she does post it. She is very open about it and she does say like look at these messages i'm getting because this is part of why she's doing it you know she's she's kind of vo vocally speaking out because of the fact that it's such a it causes such a outrage to the community where it shouldn't really um yeah. and i think you know with her i i think halima is right in saying that from from anyway from what we clearly know that we know a lot of ex-muslim women she does seem to get a lot more hate than any of us and we do get hate a lot of hate so can you imagine how much we're, we're kind of uh, you know the comparison so she i think gets it at such an extreme level and for these people it's so um by the way the name of the community i always forget how to say it sure. Koja uh, Shia Itna Shari community. Itna, oh, because oh, because it's Itna Ashar. Oh, I, I just got that right because it's twelve. Okay, okay, right. So the the yeah. So that community take Zara leaving very personally, um, and I think you know she's. If am I right in saying that she's probably the only outwardly ex-Muslim from that community, um, you know, and they are very tight knit. Um, so it's it's completely embarrassing and humiliating and infuriating for this community um and they are very upset about it i think that's you know well, we can yeah. rightly say that yeah. yeah and and another aspect that we also need to bring in i think is is, is the fact that um the shia ethnicari uh, the shia koja ethnicari community as much as they are a minority a very tight need as well yeah, so in, in in and I know this from if I compare it to the perspective of Somalis being very tight knit community where a lot of policing um, of women especially um, happens and 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 the, the 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 somebody in the comments asked if we could um, describe or read out one that I remember at the top of my head in Swahili said huyo umbwa akatwe kichwa basically means that dog should be beheaded. And that was posted yesterday. While Zara is still in this in this situation. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I mean it, it's not surprising. We all know what ex-Muslim women face, especially from within their communities, because as as, as we said before, there is a strong uh, feeling of betrayal that's uh, imposed on them because people feel like it, it's a fusion to their their religion and their culture and their community overall. Right. From there on if we uh, I know most of these de details about Zara's arrest are out already, but for people who don't know, can you just explain the events, what, what actually happened on 28th of December? Do, do well, you to... yeah. Well, um, on the 28th of December, Zara was uh, informed that she'd been called to the police station to answer questions about social media posts. Okay. So Zara's even just just before that day, her pin post and all the posts she put, because Zara is very bold and very vocal on her social media and her mm -hmm. presence is like, uh, you know, almost every day. So she quickly tweeted that I'm go I'm going, I've been reported, I've been informed that I've been reported for mm -hmm. blasphemous posts. Okay. It's very reasonable for her to actually um, um, think that and tweet that at that moment. 
and mm -hmm. and as it is dragging out and as we're finding out all these charges are a little bit of a huh um we know that this is this is about something blasphemy related can um, I also drop it? Sorry, Ali. Also, she got a complaint already. Do you remember who it was? I can't remember off the top of my head now, but she already had a complaint about the love is love post. Um, so I think she assumed actually that it was that because it was obviously two, um, two homosexual men kissing. Um, and she did get a complaint, several complaints about it. They're sorry? both straight men. They're just kissing. No, no, no. One of them is... Uh, is okay. someone that we know, yeah. Yeah, oh, an ex-Muslim or the Egyptian guy. Um, well, yeah. the picture is actually uh, at, at, at an ex juxtaposition. I would say that uh, ex juxtaposition. <laughs> juxtaposition. <laughs> yeah. yeah, into um, two gay men uh, kissing. That's our pin post, actually. Yeah. Um, it was at the time. Um, and and and. In, in Zara's situation, I mean, if if you're that vocal and if that you know, it's it. it it's very reasonable for her to to and there was Assume. the previous complaints also not just that about the post but about um she was denied picking up her family members uh as a child uh from school because she's an ex-muslim by the community the community thought that you can't pick up your uh, niece or nephew because you're an ex-muslim and made a complaint that she shouldn't step into the uh, premises of the school and this yeah. is something we know as her friends as well yeah and yeah uh, that post was a point of discussion for many days like leading up to this because that post was it, it go virally go like uh, really well and there were threats under that post you can actually see that post on twitter and you can go through the threats yourself uh, uh, and it's it's perfectly reasonable to assume like ex-muslims being asked to come in a police station because it's one, about one of your social media posts. It's the only natural conclusion from that information is it has to do with blasphemy because that's what it causes contention in Muslim community. Muslim community. Even uh, even if you didn't say post, even if you just said there's they need to ask Zara a few questions, you would assume it's because of who she is and what she does because of course you know um, and I think Halima made a really important point there that the community were already planning or not planning at that point they were already complaining about her so they were already kind of um it was a few a few people from the community complained to the school and then the school thought that was a fair enough complaint we need to stop zara from coming to the school to pick up a child Which, yeah and, and and I, I remember that I, a couple of days ago, while we we're still doing the campaign, I, I, I tweeted like some sort of an explanation that in countries where um, the, the blas there are not def definite uh, 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 blasphemy charges that can be placed on you, um, it's very common knowledge that ex-Muslims, vocal ex-Muslims, bold, uh, what, what, I mean, they're very public would be targeted through the whatever charges that can, can, can be brought against them, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into the details of why we think that these charges are bullshit, really? if I may use that word. Of course, of course. And uh, again, it just goes back to that, because Muslim communities, most of Muslim communities around the world, everything is defined for them. Like Quran and Islam, they define everything. Every aspect of the life is defined if you do anything outside of that defined box, that means you've fallen on the wrong side of that crowd. And supporting LGBT, being an outspoken woman, being making your own choices as a woman, that means you've fallen outside of that box. And that community, some bad elements within that community would, wouldn't stop at anything uh, for teaching you a lesson. Because it's their responsibility to teach you a lesson. It's their responsibility to bring you back to Islam or somehow uh, express your voice because they feel like it's fitna. Uh, and that's the word they use for it. Okay, uh, if we move forward to immediate aftermaths of the arrest, because um, uh, we'll, we'll come back to the blasphemy post afterwards when we'll talk about the criticism this campaign has faced. Uh, so, I mean... Immediate aftermaths. How did this campaign of uh, the hashtag Justice to uh, Justice for Zara K came about? What got what got you guys worried, and what 
started this whole thing. I think what's important to mention as well, um, sorry, Ali, this might be a little bit touching on the criticisms, but initially um, we actually just wanted to see if this could be resolved locally. Um, and if, if anyone has been looking at the updates that we gave right from the beginning, the first tweet that I actually tweeted out was not giving any information. <laughs> I was like, she's okay. Um, I can't give out any more information. Um, and that was because we wanted to handle this and see what the issue was and just resolve it and have it over with and get her home, basically. That was the plan. Um, and, and the reason that's touching on the criticisms is because we have had criticisms of people saying that this is just a like a publicity stunt and she wants fame and ridiculous things that make my blood boil just thinking about it right yeah. we'll, we'll come, to, come to that yeah. okay but it's 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 obviously not any of that because initially we wanted to resolve it now when we started to realize we can't resolve this uh, well we, we we needed help um to get this resolved um and we needed people to make noise and be aware of this and make sure that mm -hmm those that community um have eyes on them so that you know they can't get away with any bullshit basically there are people that are watching there are people that are standing for zara and we are watching so that they, sh they can't you know do anything horrible and ridiculous mm -hmm. that's that's when we started the campaign and we're like this is what's happening with zara everyone needs to make noise everyone needs to retweet um and um you know bring awareness to her situation uh, yeah, yeah. Really. So, uh, International uh, Ex-Muslim Coalition, which uh, uh, which has like uh, uh, ex-Muslim organizations and personalities from all around the uh, the world, uh, so they've been issuing the updates on these matters. And in these updates, it clearly says like she was kept in custody for thirty-two hours without any clear indication of uh, like initially of any charges. And then she was let go after that, still feeling uncertain about the charges. Uh, and so three charges that have been disclosed since then. Are, yeah, it, yeah, go sorry, on, go. Ali. Yeah, but hmm? like, like, you know, uh, I sorry to, to interrupt you, but that the fact that how these charges were later said to be about this and this and about a SIM card, about a Tanzanian passport that was in return, about a post she made moons ago in, in while well, she was living in, in, in London, talking about some really silly stuff. Like how many of us share a BBC article and say, oh, that's a dumb thing, you know, or, or that kind of thing. So what you have to understand is even if, you know the people who argue oh it's it, it isn't it, it isn't something bigger it's it it you know what warrants 32 hours of being grilled and questioned about her work take the hijabi yes why she left islam so i uh, you know it for me, when, when, when I hear that, it does make my, my blood boil as well. It's like you have to compound these things, come on. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't be. I, I think what's important here is to actually break down what, what was happening there. So, you know, she went in, was told about post, right? Um, yeah. When she got there, she was told it was about the president. So in a, a, a criticism of the Tanzanian president is against their, their law or whatever. Um, but I mean, that post, anyone can see a post, anyone can see the date on the post. It was in, was it May two, 2019, right? 2020. 23rd of May, 2020. There we yeah. go. Helena knows the exact date. Right, so it was when she was in the UK well before she was in Tanzania. Um, so, you know, that, it, I, I mean, now they they have disregarded that anyway because it, it was never something that they could rely on, okay? So initially that's what they brought her in for. Now, after bringing her in, then there's the kind of, well, what SIM cards do you have? How are you using your phone? You know, because they, they actually took her belongings, so her phone and and, and her passport, which we'll, we'll go into. Um, and so that's when they kind of started to get more information. And then it was, oh, the, an issue with your SIM card. That's something we can charge you with. Um, 
And then, oh, you've got an Australian passport. Where's your Tanzanian passport? This is something we can charge you with. And then it just kind of started to become this. And this is why we're campaigning because it's very clearly, oh, what can we charge you with? What have you got there? How, what's, your, what's this? What's that? What else can we charge you with? Um, and it's trying to find something to charge her with. Now, why would that happen? And you also have to remember that up to date, uh, she's been drugged through this. And every day that she has to report to the police station, there's not been a, a, a due process hasn't been followed at all. And, and she hasn't been taken to court. She hasn't been given a court day. There's literally like, why we think these charges are politically motivated and why we think that Zara is being targeted because we also have these sources uh, from the ground that, that, that are very credible um, and we know that it was instigated and started by the Kojoshia community and, and somebody went to the police and, and I don't even have to get into details about how corruptible um, um, police in, 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 in areas like this can be. Uh, mm. I am from Kenya. I know how it's corruptible not, it is. Even, it's not even just Tanzania or Kenya. This is, you know, you'll find this everywhere. You'll find this in Pakistan. You'll find this in the Arab world. You know, places where you can, um, you know, bend the rules, bend the law. I mean, in Morocco, this definitely happens. Um, you know, the, 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 this is the kind of, you know, what people don't understand, people that are living in the West that were hearing the story is you have to understand that this is not the normal kind of Western law that you can kind of just, um, oh, this is what she's charged with, that makes sense, let her just go through the normal procedure. This is not a normal procedure. And there are reasons why she's in this. Um, I think it's important maybe to also, um, I think Halima, you're probably more- Yeah, I wanted to break, yeah, I wanted to down the SIM card situation as well, because that, and the, and the passport thing yeah uh, yes. one um um I, i'm not a hundred like uh the passport uh, this the, it, it can be a little bit complicated uh, at least for me for my layman whatever but the sim card thing the sim card thing is so bullshit because in their law it says that you cannot register your 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 yourself or like you cannot get a sim card for yourself using somebody else's identification but this sim card is registered to a family member and borrowed by zara so it, it it's not like zara went and pretended to be somebody else to register um a sim card that's their own law i've read about it i looked at it and this is a law that has also been introduced um, in 2020 in, in Tanzania. But it's also been used to um, prosecute a high profile um, person, a, 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 famous, um, a famous comedian, um, what was his name? Sultan. Idris Sultan. Um, and it was used, the same law was used to, to prosecute him because he posted on social media something about laughing about politician, uh, the, the president was it, I can't even remember. Mm -hmm. About the president, literally the same the same situation. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and, and what's important to note here is then they've also kind of disregarded this SIM card now because they can't hold it against her. Mm -hmm. So what they have been trying to focus on, but it's also irrelevant um, and doesn't, kind of matter in her case is the issue with her passport. So they've been thinking, okay, we those two other charges or those two other things, we allegations, we can't really hold on to her. Let's try and hold on to this passport situation. So the passport problem is what they're saying is because you became an Australian citizen, you should have given up your Tanzanian passport. Um, she, uh, she misplaced her passport. So I don't think there is a crime against losing your passport. I think people do it do that all the time yeah. um and um also it's irrelevant anyway because she wouldn't be able to use that tanzanian passport because they've updated the tanzanian passports to is it electronic ones now yeah. and i want to talk about that because yeah. and and that's because i i i, I still hold a, a kenyan passport as well and so and and this 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 was a thing that was rolled out within the east african bloc kenya uganda tanzania that in in was it beginning of to the end of 2019 um they started rolling out that they're migrating in fact the word they use is migrating 
to electronic passport. So, mm. and, and Zara had left also as a minor, like she, she left Tanzania as a minor. She acquired her um, Australian citizenship. And according to their laws also, once you've acquired another citizenship, it's automatically assumed that you're no longer a Tanzanian citizenship citizen. Zara entered Tanzania with her Australian passport, with a valid visa, and yeah. which got extended. So the passport thing for me is also bullshit. And and also, okay, it's all bullshit, right? Even yeah. Even if it wasn't bullshit, okay? Even if this was an issue and she made a mistake, there's a fine. There's a fine that exactly. she could have made. Exactly. And then she could have paid it and it could have been done. Now, how many days, what day are we on now, Halima? You're good at count. Yeah. Two, two, day paid. 22, is it? Right, I so. Could be wrong. I could be off. Day so 22. F for us, it's all merged into one because <laughs> of, of, we've been working like day and night. But honestly, this is, it, it's so obviously politically motivated that it's ridiculous to me how people can't see this. Because if that was an issue, they would have fined her, they would move on. The police have apparently loads of time to keep this Australian citizen coming back every single day, signing in, keeping her for hours for no reason, and then saying, yep, come back tomorrow, the same thing again tomorrow. Um, it, it, yeah, it's absurd. Anyway, Ali, I know, I know you want to move on to something else. No, brilliant. You guys have covered so much. Like, I didn't even have to ask you guys to explain the charges. You've done it beautifully. And I think it's it's easy to understand. Also, on the SIM cards things, some of these laws, we have to understand these are autocratic countries. No matter what he says on paper, like this current uh, president of Tanzania has been uh, criticized by people within Tanzania and international media of his autocratic uh, tendencies, of him trying to be... May, trying to make all the decisions. And some in autocratic countries, they do introduce laws just to get the dissenters, just to get the, these laws are deliberately uh, vague in their writings. These laws are, if they are applied, more than half of the population would go to jail, but because it's not written for everybody, it's not usually practiced. It's only practiced in cases when they are sitting there and like, I'm going to get this person or this person has fallen on the wrong, wrong side of it. So uh, th there is a lot. And you guys have uh, explained all the charges. Thank you for that. Uh, before we move on to the criticism part, uh, I want to tell everybody that we'd be taking uh, your questions later on. Uh, so if you have any questions, start posting. I'll, I'll scroll up and start reading the questions later on. So now, this campaign, unfortunately, hasn't been without controversy. So uh, we, I think it's all over the Twitter now. There's, there were uh, leaks. There were screenshots from a group of activists, like a face WhatsApp group of activists is discussing the strategy. Uh, and on the backs of those leaks, uh, some ex-Muslims, uh, before Islamists jump onto it and it was made into this uh, massive thing. So it, how do you, like, what happened there? <laughs> what what happened, really? Look, I, I, the way I look at it is, like, we started mobilizing without even having a lot of information. We had, like, this zero contact, yeah. apart from her tweet. Um, but all the people who were mobilizing, first of all, no, 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 um, there are various organizations. Um, they've done human rights activism for a long time, very credible people um, started coming together. And in matters of, of uh, 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 risk analysis for ex Muslim or, or another dissenter or whoever it is, um, information that is shared uh, privately as things are being analyzed things are being checked um as things are streaming in is not something you go and share so personally um i was very hurt about that personally um it's it's a breach of confidentiality uh, and 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 second of all when the risk is so high and we still don't have answers you're not just gonna tweet everything that you 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 you, you you've just gotten you have to wait for confirmations from the back from the ground 
let me let me ask you uh, the some of the points that's been made against uh, this whole situation and see w- what you have to say against that. Uh, one of the point is why wasn't the bail announced as soon as possible? Like um, so, there are accusations that we I'll include myself in that, but uh, because I'm asking you, you guys uh, sat on the news uh, of bail. Uh, just because you didn't want to tell the people and make them worry. look, uh, this pisses me off. You know, th- let me tell you why it pisses me off. Uh, the reason why it pisses me off is: Do these people even know where Tanzania is? Bail situation was so fragile; we could we didn't know if it was going to go back. We had to hear from the lawyer. Secondly, we had to make sure Zara safety. Okay, and as soon as we knew that she was safe some of us actually tweeted zara is safe we cannot talk about anything right now we will inform you yeah. as soon as we can and and things like that it's like to assure people who are really absolutely worried about her without necessarily while we still wait for confirmation from the ground and lawyers and stuff like that um because anything could go wrong at that moment and yeah. as soon as as soon as we got that thought, go ahead we had a statement put out yeah i mean it, it doesn't even really make sense um because you know when that came out that oh you guys didn't tell us about bail as soon as you knew we, we i mean we had come out about the bail you know within less than 24 hours so it, you know, if we hadn't mentioned bail at all, which we didn't have to, for those same reasons, if we didn't want to, but it looks even more stupid because we did mention it. We did say that she's on bail. Um, so it, it's, to me, seems obvious that we were obviously waiting for something um, to happen or waiting to make sure she's safe, waiting to make sure we had confirmation from the lawyer. Then we can kind of publicly and you know I was trying to make this point as well you know um in in a video that I posted about this that it's it's so important that people understand that we are speaking publicly it's not like just to the people that care about Zara that we're giving updates to on Twitter there are people and this is very clear as well because there are people who um are you know really trying to spin this whole Zara case because of their own reasons their own um you know kind of issues that they have with Zara personally um so you know and and there are many other eyes on this as well that are obviously in Tanzania and the people that obviously I mean I this is obviously um what I believe that people in the community have done this to her they're obviously watching everything as well so we do have to be really careful with what we say um and how much information and actually we haven't given out everything that we know we haven't because it's not safe for us to do that perhaps there will be a time where we can do that but it's not right now um sorry i lost my train of thought what what? yeah because zara's safety as well in terms of like you know when 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 something is put out it's not just the, the 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 other ex-Muslims or other organizations that are watching that it's the entire internet and in the entire internet you have all these um, people who who mean her harm as well yeah. like literally waiting like you know I don't even know the expression of the word um, for this and I just wanted to support the the, the point that Mimsy was trying to make about safety as well. Yeah. Yes, completely. All three of us tweeted out, I think, the next day that Zara is safe. Now, if we wanted to make people more worried, we shouldn't have said she, she was safe. Okay. Telling yeah, people yeah. that she's safe, it means it, it's fine. We're going to need you in future. But for now, don't worry about Zara's safety. That was the more important thing. And the bail we had to wait for, there was because there's uh, law involved. We had to wait for the lawyer's uh, yeah, and people, people keep saying, I've seen some tweets about like, oh, that it's not illegal for us to say she's on bail. That's not even what we were saying. It just infuriates me. These people that are like, well, it's not illegal. You should have. Who the hell are you? But it's just. You're not I even a lawyer. I can't understand. No, but honestly, like, they're so entitled to think that we should give them this information. Like, exactly. I don't 
<laughs> at the end of the day, the most important thing is that we are getting Zara K out of this situation. Okay. I think mm -hmm. everyone should agree that. And perhaps some people don't agree with that, but they should. Um, and that's the most important thing. And that's our priority. So we will tell everyone what they need to know. And, you know, if you have a heart, can you get involved and help us raise awareness? Because Zara K shouldn't be in this situation. She she's done nothing wrong. She's done nothing illegal at all. And the reason she's there is because of her speaking out and doing what we all do I'm sorry what we all do actually um, and speak out against Islam so we should all stand up for her um, sorry I get really angry about this obviously it's, it's quite understandable it's quite understandable because uh, uh, what uh, what people also don't know is behind the scenes we were walking all these hours to try and explain this bullshit when we didn't need to you understand like why do we even need to 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 explain it of course uh, a breach of confidence happened of course it landed in 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 the wrong places out of context and all that kind of stuff but instead of focusing with the campaign forward when we have been working so hard and and some of our sleepless nights to then again have to to explain this for me is absolutely ridiculous and really pisses me off can I just say, uh, there are, sorry, Ali. <laughs> <laughs> there are there are some people I just want to thank them right now because I don't I don't know if we've ever acknowledged them but there were some people that we didn't give any explanation to and they were like well we know the facts we know the situation we're still supporting this thank you guys so much because I have so Absolutely. much respect for you guys that did that because it's true you did know the facts I saw some people even say like th these screenshots are nothing new like what th what is the big deal like I, she went yeah. for a cheesecake like uh, anyway, you haven't even gone to the alley, but um, oh, yeah. I, I do want to get. Are we gonna get to the cheesecake part? That, that's the next question because, like, it's such an absurd so criticism. Absurd. Uh, like, Can I'm, you imagine you have been let held? Me, let me bring it up first. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Ali. There's <laughs> two <laughs> angry women, like, ah! and Ali's like, okay, hey, guys, <laughs> hold on, women. I gotta ask the question first. <laughs> Ali, go. So, uh, one of these uh, one of these screenshots show a, a picture of Zara with the caption saying, uh, hey "Guys, I just wanted you to know that I've just went out and had a cheesecake, and I'm so grateful uh, of all you guys are doing for me." Now that has been problem for many people, some within our communities, uh, that. And they say that Zara was, act was actually living a luxury life where she's going out and eating cheesecakes. And we were like, those people were made to, uh, to be worried about her. Would you like to explain the, the cheesecake? How dare she have cheesecake? Can I now go into my rant? Okay. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I think at this point, because it's so absurd. Imagine you have been held for 32 hours, your friends can't get to you, nobody can get to you, you you are in a very strange, I mean, when, when Zara, I mean, Zara left Tanzania when she was 16, right? You're in a strange environment, it's very intimidating with all this misogynistic, uh, you know, environment that you're in, and, 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 then as soon as you release some bail, you get that breather, you turn, and then you turn, People don't even know that we were literally telling her, please go do something nice and just, you know, take a breather, take care of yourself. I mean, she's going to have a damn cheesecake if she wants to. Yes. Sorry, yeah, I, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Uh, Halima said it right. I mean, you, you, firstly, you don't know what, what was being said, but also either way, she can bloody go and have a cheesecake. She's on bail. It, I think people were confused because they were like, oh, they're saying she's in jail, but then she's on. So if you don't know the whole story, go and look at what we've been saying, because actually we've been very clear on what's the, what's going on. Um, you know, if you go on the CEMB website, um, we have been very, very kind of precise in what, what's happening. Um, so, you know, when she, when that got out anyway, she wasn't, it was clear she wasn't in jail. We, we had already said that. Um, and yeah, we, we were saying to Zara, like, you know, go and do something for yourself. Try and take your mind off it. Because yeah. something else I do want to say is 
what Zara went through and the, the reason that this infuriates me about all this drama around it is because it's taking away from, uh, aren't you guys people with hearts? Like this girl has been through so much. She's literally got PTSD. What she's gone through is so traumatic. And who would wish that on their worst enemy? You know, you, you it, she's got an anxiety as it is. And what she's had to go through, they didn't, you know, anyway, I won't go into details, I can't say, but it, it's very, very, very traumatic what she went through. And um, even, even just with the information that you know alone of her being overnight in a jail cell um, is, is enough for people to think, do you know what, that in a Tanzanian jail cell, it's not like some luxury, you know, kind of Western Well, you jail. get a phone call and you demand your lawyer. No, no, I no, no. no. <laughs> it, it, you know, and, and we have to hold ourselves from, from details, but just use your imagination it you know it's not a nice environment and um and it was very very difficult for zara so to say oh she's having a great time because she's having a cheesecake no that is it, just ridiculous i think the, this it, it, when he came out it should have been applauded because she's been through this traumatic experience her friends asked her can you like it's easy to just go down the well of pity in that like it's easy to be so stressed and not have any energy to do anything just lose hope because this is a traumatic experience and but she got up dusted herself down and went out did something for herself something though she can deal with what she's been through it's self-care and that's how anybody should actually treat themselves if you have a traumatic experience get up treat yourself with something and then come back to the things you want to do there, there is bigger picture at stake here for and also, just, go on for me i just have one message for people who start to analyze like their armchair uh, um, um, human rights activists or, or 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 like from from the from from twitter or whatever it is um it's like there's a lot going on in also in confidentiality in in in, in trying uh, to 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 in, in even trying to you know how do you remember you guys how stressful it was to try and get the contact in in, in itself like you for all these 32 hours you know and, and things like that people that just start saying things because they've seen one picture that was was leaked it's yeah. it's disgusting and it takes away um, the gravity it, it takes the attention how how the the gravity of zara situation because as we are speaking in this live zara is still in a lot of you know um, um it, it zara is still in a, in a very unsafe situation sorry about yeah. that and and that's the tragedy in my opinion like we have like even now we spent 15 minutes talking on this issue and i feel like why we have a bigger fish to fry. We Our, our motive uh, is still to get Zara out of that. But because some people couldn't bear that, it could be their personal uh, vendetta or grudges against Zara. It could be their misunderstanding about this campaign. Whatever it was, what you've done is to take the attention and the publicity that this campaign deserved and the the motive of getting Zara out of there safely, you've diverted all that and made it a drama, mm. a drama. There, there are people who just live for drama and that's what they try to, and we, like behind the scenes, there were scores and scores of tweets that we ignored because we just didn't want to get involved in this. We were doing our stuff. You guys were doing your stuff behind it's, the scenes. For days you've ignored it. You didn't- It's not worth it. it. It's not worth it. So, in fact, the so fact that we, yeah, the fact that we even have to address it in in, in itself is one of those things that I feel like, um, you know. Uh, but at the same time, you know, if 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 also some doubt is coming from uh, some ex-Muslims, it 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 it, it, it did become a bit of a, a thing that we needed to address. Um, but it 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 wasted a lot of time, you know. It's still wasting a lot of time. Because until Zara is on a plane going back to Australia, this campaign isn't over. Exactly, exactly. And we need to get back on track now. I urge everybody to just let go of this now. This, yeah. it, it was 
I mean, I don't want to use any any bad words for any people here. If it happened, okay, let's just move on. We need to keep on campaigning for Zara. We we cannot stop stop until Zara is out of that country, until Zara is safe and uh, is where she belongs and back doing the work she does so good. Uh, and that's what we'll be focused on. Uh, okay, guys, I think the time's gone uh, quite a lot. We should start taking questions if you want to finish. The, I had some more Can I just make so one really quick point? Yes. Just, just, just really quick. Just, just on that, what Ali just said, I think it's important to understand that, you know, th this isn't uh, sort of uh, whatever, you know, people have criticised it as. I think if you need to recognise that, you know, people who have been doing this their whole lives that have been saving people from these situations but also there are people that are involved in this that are refugees I think that's a really really important point that are refugees that have come from I mean like Ali like Halima that have come from really dangerous situations um, and that are fighting for this you know there are so many people and organizations that are trustworthy that are behind this so at least if you know if, if you can't kind of even if you feel like you don't like Zara or whatever it may be just know that this is a dire situation Zara is in danger and just have a heart and you know help us to get her to safety I just completely, want to say that. completely and then I mean from these people then comes virtue signaling like they were d trying to do something good. No, you weren't. You weren't curious. You weren't asking questions. We were accessible. Like all three of us or anybody who was actually part of the campaign were oh. accessible. If you had questions and you really wanted to know what was going on, you should have approached us. But no, you weren't curious. You were judgmental. You made judgments without asking for an explanation and, and, and started demonizing. Exactly. Yeah. And all, and all these Muslims and Ali Dawa, sorry, I, I know we didn't, weren't going to name people, but whatever. These people that are getting involved, seriously, are people going to take their word like as as gospel that that's i mean they they make up stuff all the time we, we're apparently all fake ex-muslims to start with anyway um and you're gonna go to this person as a reliable source of information for what's happening to our zara k it's just it's just so yeah ridiculous. i mean it, the islamist jumping on this it even further proves the point of how much targeting is happening to ex-muslims because the moment that because they're always making up stuff then they run with one picture and spin it in a million and two directions exactly. and, and that that i think should be very important for people okay. to remember sorry well, Ali, go on. we should we should go on to start questions we've given this uh, this whole thingy a lot more time than we should have uh, okay the first question is any news about australian embassy I think that that's a really good question because um, they haven't been helpful at all. Um, and I think what we need to do is to continue to break down their door and ask them to intervene because what are the charges against her? Why hasn't they, why hasn't anything been resolved in 22 days? Um, she's willing to pay a fine. If there's a fine, let her pay a fine. If there's something she needs to do, let, let her go to court and let it be resolved. If there's an issue, let it be resolved. But there's nothing being done. And she's an Australian solely, and we've established this now, solely an Australian citizen. Uh, citizen um, and they need to intervene so I think that's really really important that everyone continues if you have already if you haven't then please do email the Aussie embassies that are in your own country uh, yeah. to get involved in this anything else Ali? Uh, anything you have to add here Halima? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, Zara should be protected by the country, uh, by the laws of the country she is from. And I remember tweeting something like that. She is an Australian citizen, and she should be protected by the Australian government. And and think so. We all we have, I mean, all we need to do moving forward is to try and focus on on asking the Australian government to mm. take to to. I mean, it, clearly Zara is not a criminal. She hasn't committed any crime. So the Australian embassies um, um, email them, call them, yes. um, tweet. And at the least what Australian embassies can do is put pressure on Tanzanian forces to at least deal with the, deal exactly. with the matter. Uh, resolve it, it. It, yeah, just resolve it. And yeah, they haven't been doing that. It's their responsibility. Thank you, guys. The next question is, 
why wouldn't why wouldn't Zara be charged for blasphemy? Is Tanzania so secular that the letter <coughs> is a criminal offence at all? Uh, blasphemy is not a criminal offence in Tanzania. No, it, it, there there isn't a succinct definition of blasphemy, but there's some articles of, against um, hatred against religion. Um, it's, but it's what they true. are, yeah, they are misdemeanor. They also misdemeanor, and they normally don't stick because the wording is very, um, you know, it's not yeah. black and white. Oh, um, so because it's not it's not a clear cut they were trying to get something more clear cut to pin her down with exactly uh -huh. okay i love uh, deborah by the way deborah yeah, you just put that comment there thank you so much deborah because i've seen her say that and like other people have have said that too and you guys are amazing for for just knowing what's going on here and actually reading because people that complain sometimes don't even read what we've said thank you deborah <laughs> Uh, thank you, Deborah. And uh, it's uh, did you consider getting emergency travel documents from us uh, from the embassy in Australia? That's uh, that's legal. There's legal complications in, involved in that. Uh, I don't think we have anything to add there, unless you guys have. So. I don't know how. No, I was about to say something, but now I, I feel like I'm. Am I not supposed? Well, to? Well, I wouldn't call it a legal <laughs> complication, but um, certain things um, that 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 um, have to do with. Um, what kind of consulate help that Zara is kind of right now receiving? Um, we're not a liberty to say. That's all I can say. Basically, just with that, just continue to put pressure on them because they're yeah. not doing anything that they should be doing um, at all. So they're being so so disastrous right now by not helping her. Uh, right. I think uh, we've come to an end uh, and. We are finishing within time, I think. So before we go, uh, there have been some uh, call to actions, and I know you've uh, repeated a bit in uh, uh, in answering a question. Can you uh, please once again tell our viewers what they can do to help with the situation and what's the call for action right now? Do you want to go or show me? Yeah, I see you, Mimsy, I think. Okay. Um, I mean, we, we, we actually will be um, kind of having another update, but the main call to action at the moment is to, um, you know, tweet, email, really get on the heels of these um, Australian embassies to get involved, but also just to circulate information about Zara K. Just continue circulating the, the updates that we give you, um, you know, the hashtags. Um, it's really important that, um, you know, people don't forget what's happening and that she's in trouble right now. Um, and, and, and don't lose sight of that. I think everyone needs to move on from the, the, the bull that's been happening and focus on the fact that Zara is in a dangerous situation because, you know, this community clearly are quite dangerous. The fact that they really wanted to pin something on her using the law. Um, and because it's been so difficult for them to do that, we, we don't know what else can happen there. So she's not she's not completely safe. She needs to get out. So circulate information on Zara K and contact the embassies. Anything else? Anything, Alima? Yeah, I think that because uh, the longer, uh, and I think I tweeted this um, earlier, the longer that Zara uh, stays in a stuck situation, the higher the danger it is from vigilantes from that community. So please do as much as you can to ask the Australian government uh, these questions. Why are they not helping their, their citizen? Um, tweet, keep the hashtag trending as much as you can. Email, you know, help us get Zara home. Yes, and the hashtags are hashtag justice for Zara K and hashtag stand up for Zara. Hashtag, hashtag release hashtag Zara K. Hashtag free Zara K is still very relevant to me, at least personally, because I, Zara isn't free. She's out on bail, going every day to a police station. She isn't free. Freedom is when she can get on a plane. Exactly. That's freedom. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, we, 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 we need to keep demanding Zara's freedom and her safety and her safe return uh, to Australia or wherever she chooses to go. She just needs to leave get that out, country. We need that to country. play our part in that. We can uh, use Twitter, Facebook, whatever social media platform you use, uh, email the embassies all you can, as uh, um, as you said before. 
and keep making noise. We we need you guys to keep on making noise and raising awareness. Right then, uh, thank you, uh, Mimzi and Halima. Thank you so much for joining uh, me today. Thank you, um, Ali. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for doing this. And uh, before we go, I want to tell everybody that on first uh, of February, the uh, World Women Day, will be uh, uh, premiering our movie. Uh, Women Leaving Islam, uh, both of these wonderful women are part of that movie. Uh, please keep an eye of, uh, out for so that. So is Zara. Zara is also so in that is movie. Zara. So, so is Zara in that movie. Yeah. Uh, and uh, 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 for our events, check our website, cemb.org.uk. Uh, and go for that. We we offer peer-to-peer -peer support group. We offer uh, and meetups now. And when there is no lockdown and we over Corona, we'll be doing some social events as well. Uh, please be part of CMB and be part of us all together. And thank you for joining. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.